Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cafe New Canadians. Cafe New Canadians is our virtual talk show that is brought to you by New Canadians TV Network. Today, uh, in this discussion, we will be talking about this topic, which is becoming a manager in the Canadian workplace. I'm sure a lot of those people attending today will be interested in this to understand more about the Canadian workplace and how to advance your careers in Canada. I'm Shruti Dargan. I'll be the moderator for uh, today's session. I'm so happy to welcome three panelists who will be joining us. These are individuals from diverse backgrounds who will be talking about their professional journeys. Uh, we have with us Deborah Azevedo. She is the manager, store process, structure, and training at Walmart. We also have Abisoy Adekoya, who is the finance um, manager at BMO Financial Group, and also Sanket Nandavadekar, who is a product and project manager. Welcome to our uh, guests. And before we start chatting with them, let me just remind everyone joining us today that we will, of course, give you an opportunity to ask questions. And if you're joining us on Zoom, you can use the Q&A button to type in your questions. And if you're joining us on YouTube, where we're also live streaming this webinar, it would be great if you could type the questions in the chat box. Without further ado, let's now quickly jump to the panelists and learn a little bit more about them. So Deborah, I'll actually begin with you. Could you start with a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself and just tell us what you do today? Thank you so much for the opportunity and for the invitation. I really love the opportunity to talk with you and all other immigrants in Canada and people wanting to come to Canada. So I'm really thankful. Um, I'm Brazilian and I've been in Canada for almost five years now. Uh, nowadays, I'm a manager for store processes, structure and training at Walmart Canada, basically responsible for store processes and how people are trained in two stores for the 403 stores that we have uh, at this moment in Canada. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Abisoy, next would be you. Uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about, you know, your profession. Uh, what is it that you do right now? And uh, what has it been like for you? All right. Um, thank you, Shruti. Um, um, thank you uh, for having me. I must say that it's a great opportunity to be here. Actually, I remember attending, you know, a similar program a couple of years ago when I was preparing to come to Canada. So this is lovely. Um, um, currently, I work uh, with uh, as a finance manager with um, Pimo Financial Group. I'm currently responsible for the um, accounting and financial reporting of the insurance business, uh, where I, um, I, you know, facilitate the uh, month end and quarter end uh, reporting processes, and then also manage the process of sharing best practices within the insurance finance function and supporting implementation of um, new initiatives, such as uh, new GL system, accounting system, or implementation of new accounting standard. That's great to know. And, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned that you attended a similar program when you were moving to Canada, because that's one of the things that we do as part of New Canadians as well. Besides webinars like these and panel discussions, wherein we talk to uh, various people from different backgrounds, we also have information that we give out to uh, new, you know, people who are planning to move to Canada. So anyone attending, if that's what you're hoping for, uh, stay tuned and we will have more sessions lined up for you. And you can, of course, find out about those on social media. Uh, coming back to you, Sanket, could we hear a little bit about you? Sure, Shruti. Uh, thank you uh, for having me here. This is a fabulous opportunity to you know, interact with new immigrants and people who are trying to move in here. I come from IT uh, project management background. I've been into projects and products for about uh, 10 plus years now. Uh, today, I'm with one of the big five banks in Canada, uh, working into some few of the more, most complex modernization projects in IT. Um, looking forward for this uh, chat session. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of you uh, for being here. Now, of course, you've shared, you know, what is it that you do right now? But I'm sure the viewers would also want to know what was your initial uh, phase like when you moved to Canada, you know, just fresh as a newcomer when you arrived in Canada? What was your professional experience and journey like back then? So uh, probably, Abhisoy, I'll, I'll come to you first for this. If you could tell us, you know, when you moved to Canada, 
how was it like for you to um, start searching for a job or probably, you know, we wouldn't be delving deeply into this because we will want to learn more about your managerial experience, but uh, tell us a little bit about the initial phase. Okay, all right. Uh, well, um, actually, before I came to Canada, I, 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 I actually heard and learned a lot um, before moving to Canada. So that actually informed uh, my strategy when I actually landed in Canada. So I came to Canada in 2017. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and the first um, 10 months was quite, you know, challenging. I must say that. Uh, but then, um, you know, one thing, you know, that kind of, you know, um, stood up as a way of, um, you know, as a basis for my strategy were two things. Number one is that I was um, open-minded. I, have an open, I had an open mind and I, I also had a positive mindset because I heard a lot about immigrant experiences before coming into Canada, you know, and then I was like, okay, how will I be able to make sure I develop a personalized strategy for success? And I consider those two things as very, very important for me because having an open mind and having positive mindset will enable you to wither through any situation no matter what. So that was the mindset that I came into Canada with. And, and I look back today and I, I must say that, you know, it's been quite an interesting journey, right? So, um, well, my, my first job, um, what I did was that I never limited myself to any kind of a channel in terms of job search. I decided to make sure I explored through every avenue, every channel, be it um, job fair, be it um, contacting recruiters, attending, you know, networking, attending job fairs, or maybe, um, you know, doing professional networking. I make sure I kind of, you know, explore every opportunity to be able to make sure that uh, I get what I want. Though initially I was able to get a role, uh, but a managerial role, but it wasn't something I was looking for. And then it wasn't, um, um, it wasn't with an organization that I was actually looking forward to working with, right? So, but then I never let that, you know, I never, I, I did not like, I did not allow that to discourage me. I kind of um, make sure that I use that opportunity to learn, to relearn and to strategically plan for my, for my next move before I eventually, you know, secure the current role that I'm, you know, that I, I have now. Uh, I joined uh, BMO Financial Group. I joined the accounting policy team in 2018 mm -hmm. and I transited to the current role, uh, you know, as a finance manager in 2000 and 2019. Yeah. So in two years, actually, you were able to kind of advance your role and your career uh, to get to a point where, you know, it aligns more with what you really want to kind of exactly. be working into. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's such a good point because, you know, I mean, that is something which is important for people to understand that, you know, when you're new in Canada, but you're probably not new as a person who is joining the workforce, right? A lot of us come with many, many years of experience. And I see Deborah nodding. So uh, it seems like, Deborah, you had something similar that you experienced. So I'd like to hear from you. Uh, what was it like? You know, tell me about the mindset and also how you probably prepared yourself to kind of uh, have this target ready for you to gradually, you know, move on from that first job into something more managerial. Usually I say that I did everything wrong in the beginning. <laughs> I had no clue whatsoever. And Mind you, I used to teach HR back home. So I used to teach people how to get jobs. And basically, I didn't know how to do that in Canada. And, and that is something that for me was a huge eye opener. Because we, when we come here, we come here with a lot of experience. Many of us have professions, we have education, and we come here and we sometimes don't take enough time to understand what is different in Canada. And it's small differences. It's, of course we have jobs. Of course the jobs have names and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the selection process, you will have interviews. Those kind of look the same, but they are not the same. So the way that you present yourself is a little bit different. The importance of different parts of the recru recruiting and selection process are a little bit different. 
And understanding all that will land you the job that you want. But it took me getting back to study again. And I did the IEP bridging program at York for business management. While I was doing that, I discovered another program there at York that is the HR management certificate. And I took that program too. And after that, I was able to say, oh, now I see. And then I started the, the game completely changed for me because after that, any job that I would apply, I would get an interview and an offer. And I went from zero success for, to 100% success. And that was kind of magic because my profile was exactly the same. The only difference was the way that I was doing things. And I, I think that for many immigrants, what is discouraging is that you start to try and you have no responses or you Sorry. have no success. And that is the key. So it's not about you. It's not that you don't have value or you don't have enough experience or you don't have the, oh my God, Canadian experience. That's no. not the problem. The problem is the way that you were approaching it and you the way that you are presenting yourself. So it's in the details that you can make the big, change yeah and so many of the points that you and abisoe both you know have mentioned are not just important when it comes to finding that first job uh, these are also qualities that once you learn because you were joining as probably you know at a more junior level than what you are today these are things that you learn and then you're able to kind of practice that into your managerial roles as you're handling and managing more people uh sanket coming to you you know would you want to probably add something to what uh, both of the other panelists have said, or is there something different that you experienced? Yeah, Shruti. So um, to Abhisoya's point, you know, even, even my journey was similar. I did try a lot of things and eventually to a point where uh, I, I uh, enrolled myself into the bridging program with York University. I understood different aspects of Canadian business and how to approach uh, hiring managers and so on and so forth. But you know there there is a fine balance between your transferable skills, uh, the Canadian uh, business market as such, and if you understand both of these terms with with different verticals that uh, that exist here, type of yeah. businesses like fintech is strong in Canada. So in in terms of the demand and supply, uh, your transferable skills and what you have have to offer, and you present it in right way. As Deborah said, you need to understand what hiring managers are looking for. Uh, in in you know former countries typically you know, hiring agencies would reach out to you with your, you know, resume on, on portals and sites. Uh, you know, things are a little different. You need to engage with hiring managers, understand what they're looking at, be specific about, you know, what you have to offer and surface that up more often in conversations. And you'll have opportunities coming one after other eventually once you understand how to, you know, uh, position yourself, approach and build conversations and, you know, come forward instead of, you know, keeping things on your resume. That, that's, that's how, you know, I think um, would make difference for a lot of new immigrants here. Yeah, you speak with so much experience, right? All three of you uh, having been through that phase and, yeah. and now in a position to actually, you know, dole out tips to others. Uh, something that you all mentioned was, and I wanted to come to that was, you know, you're all, you all took part in bridging programs as well that are offered by York University, different bridging programs. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. At what point, Sanket, uh, did you probably, you know, learn about the uh, York University bridging program? Which one were you a part of? Uh, how did you learn about it? And tell us, you know, say top two or three things that you really benefited from uh, by being part of this program. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I when when I when I came in 2018, I was I was as Abhishek said, sir, you know, I was moving in and out of a lot of networking events, uh, you know, coffee chats, information sessions, and attending web, attending webinars and job fairs. In one of the job fairs, I happened to meet uh, uh, Monica, her team, and I understood about the program. I learned a great detail about how this program would shift my focus on uh, demand and supply in the in the Canadian markets, mainly in in Toronto. Uh, where all the action happens in Canada. <laughs> so I, I kind of learned at that time how a bridging program would uh, set me for success in, in this you know, um, marketplace. I understood different aspects of my own work. Um, 
you know, from a former country, I do have experience on IT services, being being an analyst, BA project and products, but how things are structured here, uh, what, what North American economy is dependent on. So these two aspects, mainly the marketplace, the demand supply, and what skills do I have to showcase in order to catch that, you know, get that first interview or to get that first chance. These two things I learned, uh, different subjects, verticals, you know, dribble really, really detailed at, at the program. I had very amazing opportunity to work with, to interact with different, um, you know, cohort, my, my colleagues there at, at, the, at the class uh, who are from different nationalities, experience. I kind of got to learn what they are doing. So having a network at that time when you need it the most is very, very important, I believe. That network, that ecosystem, that whole environment which was offered at, at the program gave me uh, different dimensions to look at how job market works, what should I be ready with? How should I prepare from my resume and how do I prepare for interview? Uh, what's more important, what to say, what not to say and how to say. So all these things trained me to get where I am today. And, and I give a lot of credit to the program, to Monica and her team. And you know, um, Deborah, I'd like to come to you next. Um, would you also be kind enough to, you know, introduce the concept of bridging programs to the viewers, to those who probably do not know what exactly is a bridging program, and you know, which one were you part of, uh, and how did it kind of support you? Yeah, I first heard about bridging programs also in a job fair. I was mm -hmm. attending a job fair in Mississauga. And someone mentioned, oh, you should do a bridging program. Never heard of them before. And then I went to the government website, Ontario government website, and looked for all the bridging programs available. And there are many for different professions. So this is the first thing. Depending on your profession, you will have programs that have, as the name says, the intention is to build that bridge between your previous experience and your first job in Canada. So how you do that, those programs are there to help you. You have organizations that have short-term bridging programs, something like a couple of months, and you have programs that are more encompassing as the York programs where you can study for a longer period of time and be inside an university. That is something that I was really looking forward to have that experience in Canada. So that's why I chose to go to York and look at their bridging program. I was looking for HR, but York was having only business management and IT. So I ended up doing the business management and I completely agree with Sankit when he said that all that support that you receive, it's not just the classes. The classes are great, but you have all that support that Monica and her team build around you. So you have little courses or programs or chats or seminars, things that will help you develop those tools to face the job market and also all the network that you do with your colleagues because looking for a job in a foreign country can be challenging to say the least. And sometimes it's a very lonely process. You are applying, you are sending resumes, no answers. And then you are in a room with 25 more people that are experiencing exactly the same. And even if it is to complain to each other about how hard it is, come on, <laughs> it's good, you know, it's cathartic. So that, that was one of the great things from the program because you build relationships, you build friendships, you share with people that very important moment in your life and you feel that you are building something together. And it's such a great feeling also to realize that, you know, any any kind of um, where, where at some point if you were losing hope or if you felt like things aren't really working in your uh, as per your plan, you realize that so many other people are actually, you know, in the same boat and then you're all together supporting each other to uh, to kind of reach your goals. Yeah. So true. Uh, Abhisor. So, you know, these bridging programs offered by Oak University are also like for internationally educated professionals, uh, which are one of those. 
tell us about your experience besides you know networking finding that community finding that support and and of course learning um how was this bridging program the one that, that you were part of able to kind of bridge that gap that you were seeking to fill um in your profession okay all right uh, thank you for that <laughs> just to add to what um uh, Deborah and Saket, you know, I've said, um, you see, uh, that bridging program, I actually got to know about it when, in the course of my, you know, networking, uh, if um, a family friend who was actually one of the graduates of the program, you know, told me that, oh, why can't you go to York, you know, go online, search for York bridging program, and then, you know, try and go for the information session and let's see what happens. And that was how I started. That was how I started, and then you know when I when I went for the information session, because you know I had you know an objective in mind. Then I was experienced. I was looking for a, a higher level role. What, since I came into Canada, I, I you know I was actually getting a call. I was I had that, and a very I had a lot of inter, interviews, right? But nothing was forthcoming. But one thing that you know kept me going was that I was very persistent. And then I was like, okay, I think there's a gap somewhere, yeah. right? I think there's a gap somewhere. Uh, when people talk about Canadian experience and all of that, I was like, okay, what are they really talking about, right? So, but I knew there was a gap in terms of, um, you know, some of the soft skills that we are talking about here, some of these, uh, they are some of these behavioral skills that we're talking about, they are, you know, cultural in nature based on my understanding. And I know that this is a new environment for me. I really need to understand what is it that I have not been, that I have not been doing or that I've not been saying when I go for interview that I need to, you know, I need to get. What is that thing? And I know inside of me, I know it's something that is more cultural based, right? I need to integrate myself. I need to find out what is going on. It's not really about my experience because when any employer get my resume, they are like, oh, before you know it, they will just call me. Can you come for interview and all of that? But at the end of the day, I was like, after the interview, oh, I kill it. But then, you know, like, okay. So when I, I attended the program, in fact, the program actually opened my eyes, especially in terms of communication skills. You know, there's a difference between, mm -hmm. you know, communicating in terms of speaking the language and then in terms of the way you, you know, you communicate really, right? So because most of these um, skills, they are more like cultural based right they are more like cultural based so the curriculum of the program kind of exposed me in terms of being able to uh, being able to make me develop my communication and cultural skills within the canadian context and then also some of the some of the uh, you know professional you know workshops that we are usually organized were very very invaluable to my career success and all of that so i actually got did my desire a few months after I started the program. Just a few months after I started, I started the program, but I was like, I had already gone into the program. I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this, right? Because most of the things that I was learning from the program, it's like the job came at the right time. The job came at the right time, and I was able to put that to use, especially you know, when I'm working with my team and all of that. And it's been quite, quite interesting. You know, all of you have been actually dropping those keywords, transferable skills, uh, to talk about, you know, the network that you find and so many other things. Let me also now actually come to communication, for instance. Now, all of these are definitely skills and this skill set helps you find the first job, but also helps you get another job and then the one after that, right? So, Deborah, a question for you, and this is also from the audience. Uh, they would like to know what is the difference between, you know, getting a job in Canada and then getting a promotion to a managerial position in Canada. So could you compare your probably uh, job interviews for your first job, initial jobs, and when you were kind of progressing in your profession? What was the main difference? I would say that getting the culture right is the main difference. Because to manage people here, you need to understand that. You need to understand how it, how everything gets in place inside a Canadian company. So how you give feedback, how you ask for feedback. If you are not very happy with 
a colleague or if you're not very happy and with another department at the company, how do you express that? And it will probably be a little bit different from what you used to do in your country of origin. So getting those cultural cues right, that is, I, I would say, the most important part. Because uh, when you are applying for a managerial position, what people are looking at is not just your technical competence, because that is more or less a given. What, the question is, how can you lead people to develop something or how can you lead people to deliver a result? And that part of the leading people or managing people will be the most important part, I think, and the crucial difference between any job and a managerial position. So the focus on the cultural aspect, understanding that, and then, you know, perfecting that. Yes. Great. Uh, Sanket, if you remember the same phase as I spoke to, you know, Deborah about those, those two different job interviews, could you tell us about something that you probably learned that, you know, or, or a mistake or a challenge that you faced that you were able to correct later after understanding more about you know culture or understanding more uh, through the bridging program when it comes to preparing yourself to be a manager certainly uh, shruti so the most important thing that i learned of my five years here is a uh, behavioral aspect of uh, a job or a task i believe um, interviews these days for all multinational companies uh, who, which are either canada origin or us origin focus on behavior aspect of candidates. Um, so I believe in Canada, what they look is look at it as an intersection. You know, what I mean by intersection is I'm referring to your technical skills and your behavioral. There's a lot of emphasis on behavioral skills because of multiculturalism here, uh, people coming in from different walks of life. And, you know, they bring in, everyone brings in technical skills and expertise. But what's more important here today is to understand how to operate in that, you know, multidimensional environment, how to be sensitive, how to be emotionally intelligent about a situation and how to react and interact, how to collaborate and make, make any task or job or project successful. So the most important aspect that I realized when, when I was moving between roles or in, in, in a company or moving up, I realized that behavioral aspect of job communication and being very, very open to collaboration was the most important aspect to move in either vertically or horizontally. Yeah, th yeah. those were my observations, Shruti. Yeah. Abhisoy, uh, we didn't forget about you. Let's hear from you <laughs> about, you know, what were those initial uh, kind of differences that you were able to spot or, or things that you were able to perfect as you went along um, into progressing in your career? Yeah, 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 that, yeah, you're right. So like um, uh, Deborah and uh, Sanke just mentioned, the behavioral skill, I, I tell you, very key, very important, especially in terms of your communication. And, and that was one thing that, you know, uh, got me the permanent role at BMO, right? Because when I actually joined, uh, you know, um, on a contract basis initially when I joined the bank, but um, uh, um, along the line, uh, I got a feedback. From my from my manager and the feedback was based on the way that i was communicating it was based on the way that i was going both in terms of interacting with my team and in terms of you know um communicating through emails and all of that and that was you know that was you know that was the the, the that was the what changed it for me really that was what changed it for me and then you know because when i joined i was I wasn't even looking at, okay, I know that this is a very big bank in Canada. Okay, whatever road that I'm able to get here, let me just get it. And then I can work my way up and all of that. But in less than six months, I must tell you, in less than six months, it was, it was very kind of, I was actually surprised. In less than six months. So that's why I'm saying that that behavioral skill is very key. And technical skills in terms of education and qualification and all of that, these are just things that will get you into the you know into the organization in terms of get you into the door through the door right but when you go in less emphasis are placed on those things so you get to see more of you know more emphasis being placed on communication skills 
you know, other behavioral skills, your interaction with people um, in your interpersonal relationship, how you are able to get along, you know, within your team. I don't know, they are very, you know, these are very key success factors to, to developing your career, especially when you are looking at a higher level role, really. <laughs> Yeah. I, I would say that even very concrete uh, things like, for example, uh, these days you need to speak about diversity and inclusion. You need yeah. to be able to speak mm -hmm. about that. You need to be able to speak about fairness at the workplace and equity at the workplace. Yeah. So those kind of components that are embedded in Canadian culture, you need to learn them to be able to transition for a managerial position. Yeah. You know something, and I'm so glad, uh, Deborah, that you mentioned this because, you know, people say this, that you need to get your foot in the door and then work your way up in an organization. How exactly can one work your way up? So, so when it comes to diversity and inclusion, could you, you probably share an anecdote with the viewers about, you know, what was your learning or was there something that you were completely surprised by in Canada? Or, you know, there are things from various cultures that we probably don't really focus on till we are put in a situation and we realize how important and how sensitive those situations might be because we're in a multicultural uh, city or a country, you know. And, and so could you tell us a little bit about that? Say some anecdotes, some examples that you can share. I, I will, I have tons of examples because I work with people, I help people that are migrating to Canada or looking for a job here. I do some volunteer work with that. So I have tons of examples. But one thing that I perceive very strongly is that any medium size to large company will have a lot of, policies and a lot of actions regarding diversity. They will not take it for granted. So let's talk here about the big banks. I worked for two of them, uh, for CIBC and Scotia, and I think that the other three are the same. They are paying attention to that all the time. They have policies, they have actions, affirmative actions, etc. And the thing is, this goes into the job on a daily basis. So different from other countries, here to be different is good. And as you affirm your differences, you can find your niche and you can find this kind of authenticity will give you some space too. And I, I will give you my personal example. I'm autistic. And I said from the get-go, from my job interview, I just disclosed that I'm autistic. And this is something that not only was embraced by the company and my colleagues, as is something that I see right now as some kind of advantage, because it gives me some characteristics that others don't have. So being able to speak your truth, being uh, open, being clear is something that will also help in getting that next position because it, that is the kind of personable relationship that companies are looking for in their managers. And, you know, like you said, this kind of openness and to be able to kind of show that vulnerability in, in yourself will also show you as a person who is more sensitive to others in your team as well, you know, yep. because if you can take that step of coming out to talk about something that is personal to you, that just gives more confidence to your team members and others around you working with you um, to know that, you know, we're in a healthy space and we understand each other as well. Yeah, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Nabila Xtabalan, she is the CEO of Walmart Canada. And during the pandemic, she came out and said, okay, I'm suffering from anxiety. I'm having a lot of trouble with anxiety right now. And she had many conversations. She started a movement for mental health inside the company. And that was very, very positive. So that kind of openness is right now in Canada, it's very well seen. Yeah. 
Now, diversity and inclusion is, of course, a big element and one of the key things, but it's one of the elements, right? Sanket, what would you add to that when it comes to how can one work their way up in an organization? Uh, what are some of the things? So my question to you in this case would be, say I'm a newcomer, I've been able to get my first job, but I have hopes and dreams to be able to grow in that position. What are some of the things that I should start doing in the first few months itself? I believe... Um you know, having very, very open and positive mindset is very important here. Um, as, as, as the common fundamentals across any industry are to keep tap of what's happening in the industry, you know, are there any advances happening outside of your own company, keeping a tap of, you know, the most uh, advanced certifications, programs, uh, licenses that you could go for, uh, networking, very, very important, uh, paramount that you network a lot with your peers, seniors, leadership inside the organization and outside. Um, and, and, you know, have some type of goal and roadmap for yourself so that you know that, okay, I'm, I'm here today and this is how I want to progress my career. And these are the areas, say, for example, you know, you, you, you find uh, data or machine learning to be, to be the most interesting aspect of, you know, your career growth. Then maybe you know taking up programs, talking to people who are in that industry, that space, and are making some huge impact uh, with AML or you know specifics of of your job, uh, that would help you long way. And you know having conversations with them, having mentorship programs, uh, York University uh, facilitates to get you mentors uh, via a company uh, or by an institution called Track. You know um, so such things would would really help you to understand beyond what you know. So unknown, you know, exploring the unknown and understanding where you have strengths and kind of tying your strengths and dreams together will take you really, really, um, you know, forward in, in terms of your career goals, as well as your, uh, you know, educational financials and other goals in, in general. So I believe these, these things are important. Having mentors is super important. Uh, being open towards growth is also very important. And communication, again, again, very important because you need to communicate what you want, what you're looking at, and, you know, understand if if there is any any unknowns there, which others have to, and then, you know, be a part of that learning group, a mentorship group, uh, share and learn and grow. That That's the way to go, Shruti, I believe. Yeah. Abhi, uh, you know, you're in the banking sector, and it's one of those sectors that are so lucrative when it comes to newcomers from various professions uh, when they decide to you know, join the banking sector as well. So it's, it's one of those key sectors that has a lot of interest uh, when it comes to newcomers. What are some of the tips that you would share for people who have had some background in the banking and financial space or people who do not have that background? Uh, what is the growth that they can expect in a sector like this? Uh, and, you know, to move closer to their goal of being a manager. Yeah, all right. So um, I would say that um, um, in the banking sector, you know, um, there are a lot of opportunities, right? Uh, for me as an accountant, um, um, my skill is more like, my competence is more like in the financial reporting, right? Yeah. It's more like in financial reporting. So but one thing that I would say that, um, uh, you know, some of the key success factor for, especially for someone, who want to quickly work is our way up there when you are in the banking sector is the number one. You have to show strong commitment, you know, to your work, right? There must be strong commitment. And that's one of the one of the ways I was able to get the trust of my of my manager, right? You strong commitment to, to your job. And then having a big picture, right? Having a big picture too is very, very important like like i said i'm specialized in um, my core competency is in financial reporting but when i came to canada i was like okay i don't want to kind of box myself into a corner i need to kind of be able to have a big picture and that was one of the reasons why i was like looking at you know a program that will open up my mind right and then and that was why the bridging program at shock actually opened up my mind uh take for instance i'll give you an example I'm not in the tax space, right? I mean, tax laws and all of that, right? But the knowledge that I got from that program opened up my mind and actually complement what I do, you know? I'm able to speak, you know, uh, with you know, when I'm in a team, when it comes to, you know, able to contribute constructively, even though that is not my core competence, that's not 
my core area. But the knowledge I was able to get from that program, you know, actually gave me that, you know, opportunity. So it's very important to have a big picture mindset, you know, especially when you are, you know, looking at high, higher level role and all of that, <laughs> showing um, strong commitment um, to your job. And also, like Sanket mentioned, having key um, a relevant certification in the field <laughs> is also very important. I actually got my certification <laughs> before coming into Canada because I knew that uh, that's a regulated profession, so I know that uh, <laughs> it's going to actually be very, very important for me then. Yeah. And would either of you, you know, anyone from uh, the three panelists, would you want to probably share another anecdote to, to kind of add to the things that you have said, initiative taking, communication skills, um, making sure that, you know, you're vulnerable? I, I want to add something yeah. to the mentorship idea because it's it really works a lot. So it's really good to have mentors. It's not common in many countries to have mentors. So I personally com I couldn't agree more with Sankit and Abisoy on that. And I would say uh, a little bit more. Try to look for mentors in uh, one of the ways to choose a mentor is someone in the position that you want to have. So look at those people because basically they can tell you what are the technical skills or certifications, experiences, exposures that you need to have to be there in their position in the future. So uh, that is a good way to progress, to look at this kind of package. Sometimes here you need to put yourself out there. So you need to volunteer to do something or to volunteer to engage in a project before you get that promotion. So uh, talking with people about that, looking for ways to get to that job or even planning your career in terms of, okay, where I want to be in five years or 10 years and what are the steps to get there? That is a good way. And uh, it, you need to remember that you can progress your career inside one company, or you can do that changing companies. And both ways are okay. There's not a yeah. good way and a bad way. Both ways are okay. It's much more regarding what you want to do and where you are a good fit or not. The best that you fit with the company, the better will be your results and your progress. So sometimes people need to just change companies to get that. And sometimes people will stay in the same company and will get that. So either way, uh, knowing where you want to go, it's a good way to find a mentor and start working on that. Yeah. You know, um, becoming a manager, of course, is is one of the, like, it, it sounds and it is one of the, like the great things uh, to be in an organization for sure. But Something that comes with it besides responsibility is also being able to tackle difficult situations with the team, right? To be able to navigate uh, those complex relationships that you have with each of your team members. Um, Abhi, so any examples that you'd like to share from, you know, that phrase, uh, that, that phase wherein you're interacting with different teams, coordinating work with different people, and when you're faced with difficult situations, this is one of the questions that comes up in the behavioral aspect of interviews as well. Uh, what are your tips there? Uh, uh, number one is you have to be patient, right? You have to be very, very patient. You know, uh, this is a diverse, you know, you're working with a diverse, a diverse set of people, right? And earlier we talked about diversity, uh, equity and inclusion and all of that. So you need to be very patient when you are in a team because you know um, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of challenges that you face on a daily basis, especially when you're working in a team. So number one is that you have to be very patient. And then number two is that you have to be very diplomatic you know, in your dealings, you know, when you deal with people and, you know, and, and try to kind of listen to them and see uh, things from the way, from their own perspective too, right? So, and that will enable you to be able to, you know, channel the appropriate uh, way of resolving whatever issues or whatever challenges that is, you know, that is at hand. So those are the things that I would say for now, based on my, based on my experience. Yeah. So, you as well, sorry, Deborah, you I had would something add, to add? Uh, ask for help. <laughs> because ask for help yeah. it's not a problem it's a good thing to do so you yeah, can sure. ask for your HR business partner to help you 
you can ask for your superior to help you. Don't think that you have to figure it out all yeah. by yourself. You know, it's not like that. When you ask for help, people feel engaged. They want to help you. They will train you. So asking for help is also a good way to deal with difficult situations. Yeah. So rightly said. Uh, Sanket, I was coming to you for, yeah. you, you know, you're a project manager, uh, someone who works with various stakeholders on, on any project, right? How would you be able to handle difficult situations? And also, could you talk a little bit about the leadership qualities that a manager is expected to exhibit and uh, how, you know, they're able to kind of keep the team motivated? Yeah, this is an, this is an amazing question, Shruti. I mean, I have been experiencing this from quite some time, even in former country and here. I believe... Um, you know, as, as rightly said but the, from the panel, it's, it's about patience. It's about listening more, speaking less, speaking the last and the least. And then uh, very important is uh, how emotionally intelligent are you about yourself and others, uh, giving everyone their space of opinion. Um, you know, even, even if it comes to ventilating what they feel, if they're frustrated or if the situation compels them to do something that they don't want to, so it's all about accommodating everyone uh, and bringing them back to this bigger, larger, broader common goal for which everyone is sitting at table and trying to achieve something. So I believe um, leading without title and trying and drawing uh, certain lines where people can have certain guidelines to work around yeah. is important in any work situation. Uh, challenges are inevitable, change is constant. So I believe if you, if you prepare yourself to have um, these situations more often, you understand and work with your team together. Um, you know, things become easy as you go, as you evolve, as you experience, as things pass by. As a project manager and stakeholders, I, I think uh, the most important thing is being upfront, uh, planning well in advance, starting early, uh, keeping everyone informed of what they should be and how they should be. Like someone needs to know in one line what what's the update someone wants, an essay around it. So it all depends on uh, who needs what and when and if okay. if you if you have very clear calm mindset i think you can operate on multiple projects you know achieve what everyone has to achieve and help everyone achieve what they want to achieve that that's my take on you know how i would handle or have been facing difficult situations so far all of you have not only shared, you know, the top do's, but also like don'ts uh, in through all the various things that you had to uh, share with us today. Let's take a couple more questions. Um, Abhisoy, I'll direct this one to you. So Flavi, who is uh, in the audience today, is asking us that one difficulty she faced, uh, I, I'm sorry to say she, uh, one difficulty I faced was to understand the market to be able to focus on a specific path. You know, when you're so desperate to be able to kind of just get employed, you forget or you're not able to focus specifically on directing your efforts. So what is your tip to developing a good focus and how can one avoid distractions in that pathway? Okay, all right. So um, I'll, I will kind of give advice based on, you know, my strategy, you know, when I, you know, one of my, you know, based on my personalized, um, you know, strategy you know for success that i developed you know when i was about to come into canada because really i will tell you there is no one size fit all right there's no one size fit all you just have to look at yourself and you know do um and kind of develop a strategy that works best for you because what works for him may not necessarily work for b right so number one is that to avoid distraction you can take up a job you know that is not probably relevant to your skill set that is not what you actually want to do but make sure that the job does not consume much of your time like for instance when i came the first maybe one week or so i was doing a kind of a job that wasn't what i really wanted to do but i made sure that um, i wasn't doing that job in a way that it consumed much of my time i was, it was actually a night job really so yeah. i had the whole of the day to actually focus on what I wanted to do in terms of being able to apply for jobs that actually aligns with my skill set, that actually, you know, based on, you know, what I intend to do right here in Canada. Now, that's one thing. So you have to be very st strategic about that. And then also another thing that you need also need to do is that don't just apply for jobs. You know, when you know that this is your skill set, this is what you love to do, this is your areas of interest. Focus on that area in every of your application. 
in every job that you apply to. Don't just be desperate that, oh, you just want to get a job, you just want to get a job. No, it doesn't work like that. So you yeah. have to be strategic and be deliberate and be deliberate about it. I think that's, and at the end of the day, you will definitely you know, get what you want and avoid unnecessary distractions. And, you know, like you said, uh, survival jobs, uh, a lot of people do feel the need to or are forced to kind of look for survival jobs initially to kind of just get a foothold of what's happening in the country to be able to start earning yeah. and then kind of focus. Focus. But such a great tip that you should always have some time allocated to be able to focus on the career paths that you desire to be in. Yeah. Um, Deborah, I'll ask you to take the next question. Uh, and probably this might be the last question for today's session. Uh, this one is about mentorship. You know, you spoke about mentorship as well. Um, how can one ask for a mentor within an organization without creating conflict with your current manager? So if within the organization, you know, of course, you can have mentors outside and in the organization. What's your tip there? I would say you need to look first at the culture inside that organization. So uh, usually people have mentors inside the organization or not. If the company is kind of, no, no, we don't do that, it would be better to look for mentors outside the organization. You will not be the person that changed the culture that's not your job so you know try to put yourself in a position that blends with the organization you are in even if you want to change organizations after that you can do that you know i i have the opportunity to work in an organization that not only gives you permission to that but incentive incentives uh, incentivize this uh, like you should have at least two mentors at any time because the company sees that this is the best way to develop people and to create more engagement commitment etc so uh it's another cultural aspect i would say that you need to see how the company deals with that the company that you are right now and again, uh, I may be putting my foot on my mouth now, but I would say that any large organization would like you to have mentors <laughs> because they have more this kind of uh, mindset regarding developing people. And to, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I, just to add to what Deborah said, you know, uh, I think there's nothing wrong if you have more than one mentor, or uh, you have two mentors or three mentors or as many mentors that you're able to have, right? Like me, I have, my manager is my mentor, right? My manager is my mentor. I also have some mentors outside of where I work, right? So I think it's, it's very good to always, you know, to always, you know, look at um, where you work, like Deborah said, to be able to know what is the organizational policy Am I able to have mentors within the organization? How many mentors can I have? Then that's not, that's not stopping you from having, you know, mentors outside the organization that you work. You know, it all depends on your strategy and, uh, you know, what you are looking forward to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for, you know, those wonderful tips. Sanket, I'll give you one last opportunity if you had something to add to what both of the panelists said. And yeah, then we'll sure, be moving sure. on to a different uh, segment reserved towards yeah. the end. For sure. I just wanted to make one point, you know, for immigrants who are here and if they have um, a situation at their end to manage mainly it's mostly resources you know not you know financially or whatever they should take up survival jobs and there's 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 no looking down on taking survival jobs uh, they they help you to learn how communication happens here how interaction happens what's important uh, it gives you a lot of insight of how work happens in general so survival jobs add you know add a lot a lot of value it's just not uh, you know, paying your bills, but earning some skills that will help you in the long run. Uh, people who are trying to come to Canada, uh, for sure, try and do your certifications, look for jobs, start applying, uh, you know, learn what's the language here of hiring market or processes so that you, you know, kind of latch on to those keywords, conversations, answers, questions, behavioral type of interviews, and prepare yourself in that direction. So yes, when you come here, do take survival jobs if, if the case is so. Keep uh, looking for your, you know, ultimate goal job and keep working towards mentoring programs, bridging programs, uh, having a lot of networking sessions, coffee chats. Everything adds up finally to get you where you want to go. Yeah. 
Thank you, Sankeet. Thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Abisoy, for uh, you know joining us today and sharing your experiences and all of these the advice that you had. Uh, at some point, different points, you all mentioned Monica, and now I would actually like to uh, welcome Monica, who is from the York University Bridging Programs, representing and uh, to talk about because this uh, session is also in collaboration with the Liberal Arts and Professional Studies at York University. And we'd want to actually uh, hear from Monica a little bit about those programs before we end today's session and also how you can sign up for any upcoming information session that you might be interested in for these programs. Um, as we have her on the screen, I would also like to tell all of you that we have these Cafe New Canadian sessions every um, a couple of times a month. And it's always interesting to be able to join these and you will be able to benefit in so many ways like today to hear from the panelists as well as get lots and lots of more information. Monica, I see you've joined us. Could uh, completely over to you now. Thanks, Shruti, and thanks to all of the panelists. It's great to see the three of you again. And um, I really found your insights very valuable in terms of really thinking about the complexity of the transition uh, to the labor market. But as you can see, the people who come to our program are amazing. And um, really, uh, for us, it's um, a great experience each time because each person's journey is unique. And we've tried to design bridge programs that provide people with the supports that we know will help newcomers, um, but also give those supports in a flexible way so that people can choose and find the things that they need. So just really quickly, they mentioned uh, some of the programs and opportunities we have. We run a foundations program which is a new program with us funded by IRCC. It's a short program. It only runs four months and it really focuses on the foundation skills like business communication, getting oriented to the Canadian market, becoming a manager, um, and understanding those sort of soft skills and the Canadian context. And that program has run very, um, it's all the courses are IEP driven, IEP focused, and people are together and really are able to build those friendships uh, that many, uh, Deborah and many of the team members talked about and building those connections. We then have two other programs that people can advance onto, which are our professional certificates in Canadian business or information technology. And what's great for people in those programs is you're able to choose from courses across the faculty in areas of specialization. So people can enter those programs with different professional backgrounds and choose the courses that best suit their career journey in terms of being able to upskill themselves or just adapt and gain some of that knowledge in their Canadian professional background. Um, and so, from doing the certificate programs, people come out of our program with a qualification and also just having that brand, having that qualification um, from a Canadian university um, also is really valuable, we find, to people in being able to align themselves and promote themselves to employers, um, showing that they have um, some Canadian education without having to go all the way back to zero and redo an entire degree. And that's really our goal at York um, in terms of making the education targeted to the needs of newcomers, but also providing some choice and flexibility. We also design the program so it's flexible. It's part time in the evening. Um, the specialized courses can, are spread generally over a 12 month period. So people don't need to feel um, they have they get that flexibility. And I guess finally, the thing I would really talk about is Joining a program like this, the value of it is also that making connections with other people, but also finding out about other services, other supports that you can access, connecting with different mentoring programs and different networking opportunities. And so bridge programs are really valuable just as being a place where you can come and 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 learn more about all the opportunities that really are um, out there for you um, and making sure that it really breaks down that kind of isolation um, uh, in the journey um, to finding work. 
And I think that one thing that I find in all bridge programs, including ours, is, is that ability to connect back with alumni, like the people that you're hearing today, and really learn from other people's um, experiences. And I think one last final thing I'll say is don't let finances be a barrier. Our programs are funded. People don't need to pay fees. They can access bursaries and supports. And most bridge programs across Ontario give you access to things like uh, an OBPAP bursary and other supports. So when you arrive in Canada, you know, there are these kind of supports for you um, and uh, they can really help you thrive as a professional and really reach uh, where you should be able to reach um, faster. And that's really the goal of bridge programs. So thanks very much for tonight's session. I really enjoyed it. And I'm sure uh, as did many of uh, the people on. Thank you, Monica. That was so nicely summed up. And uh, we've actually shared some links in the chat box for all of you attending. And we will also be sharing the recording of this webinar, as well as more links in our communication to you post this. Uh, let me quickly just wrap the session up with a little bit about this uh, discussion that was brought to you by New Canadians TV Network. You, we have a TV show that you can watch on Omni Television if you're in Canada. We also are present across social media and have a monthly newsletter that you can subscribe to to stay updated about more sessions like this that we, we had today and so many more um, programs and information that's there on our website and across various channels. Thank you so much to all our guests, the panelists, and everyone who took the time out to join us today and for uh, asking questions, making this session a success. Thanks once again. Have a good one.